already have enough love. La 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 la. I already do have enough yarn to last me a lifetime. And I just thought, he needs a giant amigurumi too. <laughs> you would not believe the difficulties I had in sourcing hot water bottles. <laughs> she offered me two of her planners to do as a giveaway, which is super, super kind. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> that was true. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay, if you're new around here. I thought I would come back with a crochet catch up today. It's been a little while. We moved house at the start of October and it coincided with one of the busiest, probably the busiest month I'd ever had work-wise. So it was a lot and then obviously we were getting settled on a new house. This is my new office space, which is very exciting. And um, yeah, here we are, it's January, it's a new year. I'm back with the podcast, all is well. Um, I have four finished objects to show you today. Some new things, including some bits that I picked up at Yarndale, a little giveaway, and do I have a work in, yes, I have one work in progress. So let's get started. I thought I'd start with some new things because I picked up some really, really pretty yarns at Yarndale, which if you're not familiar, Yarndale is a yarn festival here in the UK and it was held last September. I think my last video maybe went up just before that, so you definitely haven't seen these, but I was there for two days, um, sort of three days with the setup as well, with my mum, and I did do a little vlog, so I'll see if I can edit that and get that together for you. Um, and I really wanted to buy a yarns, a yarns quantity? A sweater's quantity of yarn in like a really nice hand-dyed yarn or whatever, but <laughs> when I was there, I feel like I have bought quite a bit of indie dyed yarn in the past, but obviously everybody's prices has gone up and I was kind of thinking it'd be more like 16, 18 pound a skein and it was more like 25 pound a skein, a lot of the ones I was looking at were like 20, 25 and I just thought, ooh, I hadn't quite budgeted for that. So I went with good intentions because I'm forever buying single balls of yarn which are no good to anyone. But anyway, I didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the money scared me, but I, I, had, I mean, I ended up spending a ridiculous amount of money on this yarn, but I mean, just look how pretty it is. Um, it's obviously a hand spun art yarn. It's, it's just, what, let me see what it's called. Um, so it's by a fibre artist called Eleanor Decor. And does it have a name? I'm not sure if this particular colourway has a name. It says um, it's been made from Corridale wool, merino wool, silks, nylon, acrylic, bamboo, cotton and Angelina Sparkle. So basically covering all the bases. And she does have an Instagram, it's Eleanor Decor. She just had such fun, I don't know how well you can see the sparkle, such fun, um, it just reminds me of a fairy just really pretty. My, my daughter isn't even really into this kind of like fairy sparkle anymore so I've no idea what I'm going to make with it. Um, if you have any suggestions I would love to know. I did think that I might, this was a project from my first book and it basically uses really chunky yarns and then um, a kind of an iron weight cotton over the top um, so you can still see the yarns inside. It's basically filet crochet um, but you never crochet with the carried yarn, so where I've got the chain spaces, it creates a pattern which you can then see the carried yarn underneath. I called it a rug in the book, and that was more because I was um, too lazy to make a whole blanket, but I mean, it's basically a blanket. To all intents and purposes, it's a blanket. How well you can see the pattern. So I did think maybe I could do some kind of project um, like this, with this yarn, it probably would be more like a cushion cover, so 
you know, sort of crochet over the top so you can still see it. It probably lends itself best to a weave, but we shall see. But that is a new thing that I have. And then the other yarn I picked up at Yarndell is equally, <laughs> equally impractical, but oh, can you see why I liked it? Um, this was from the Threshing Barn and they had lots of slightly more unusual yarns. This one is a recycled sari silk ribbon and it's all spotty. I love it. Um, again, I feel like this would probably lend itself quite well to a weaving. And actually now that I'm saying that, my office has kind of taken on a little bit of a like black accent theme. And then in this little corner, I've got like a black frame mirror and some prints. Um, over here is a fireplace. So actually, I've got a big blank wall, the kind of opposite side of this camera, and some kind of weave with these would look really nice and it would go very well in here. Um, or I could crochet maybe like a bowl or something with them, but I really love the spots and I do wonder even if I crocheted with it if I would lose the spots, but I just really like them and, um, yeah, I've had them since September and I haven't done anything with them yet. So again, if you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, and then the third thing that I picked up at Yarndale um, is the giveaway that I mentioned at the start of the video. So I had the great pleasure to meet this, this seller, Popcorn and Crocodiles. Um, and just kind of by chance, this wasn't my intention, I wasn't planning on hosting a giveaway or trying to score some free merch from awesome sellers. But we had a we had a chat, she was another seller at Yandel, and she offered me two of her planners to do as a giveaway, which is super, super kind. Um, and these planners are sensational. So there's two of them both the same size this one has got like a um fabric cover and this one is more of a hardback cover and they have been so well thought out and so beautifully planned so the space is in them for um drawing and graphs the space is in them for notes there's a yarn inventory section and what else have we got i did spot i'm not sure if it's only in this one a really amazing colour wheel. Um, there's a yarn note section and it's pre-punched so you can add your yarn to the side. Oh, here we go, look. How beautiful is this colour wheel? It's just really high quality in terms of how it's printed. There is a little measuring section for all your needles and crochet hooks in case you have one. And also a tape measure down the side. It's just, like I said, it's been so well thought out. There are some little pockets to put samples and swatches in and um, a section at the back with tabs so that you can make a note of whatever you want to make a note of with regards to your planning, your crochet, your, your crafting adventures in yarn. I just, again, like I, she was so lovely and she said, I really love everything you do and I'd like to, you know, I'd love to gift you these. You can use them as you see fit or in a giveaway. How kind is that? Um, I was very, very tempted to keep this one for myself. Um, it's so pretty. But yes, I have these too. So if you would like to enter the giveaway, just leave me a comment below and let me know what you've been making recently or what you're planning to make soon. It can be crochet or any other craft or just leave me a little comment really um, and maybe say I would like to enter the giveaway so that I know you would like to enter the giveaway. It's not complicated. Um, but yeah, those two lovely planners. And as I said, the, the seller's name was Popcorn and Crocodiles and her website is popcornandcrocodiles.co.uk. So... That is everything that I've personally bought new recently. Um, I didn't get, oh, I tell you a lie, there is one other book, but I'll show you that as part of my finished object section um, because I've made something from it. I didn't get any crochet stuff for Christmas. Partly, <laughs> I wonder if my family think it's like bringing coals to Newcastle at this stage because I already have so much, but for whatever reason, um, I didn't get any craft stuff for Christmas. I didn't really specifically ask for anything, so 
that's fair enough. And um, I already have enough love. La la I already do have enough yarn to last me a lifetime. So again, fair enough. We'll let them off. Um, moving on to finished objects. Okay, so I have a couple of finished objects to show you that are specific to Curate Crochet Box, which is the monthly crochet subscription box that I run. Um, and the first up is do, 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 this little guy. Um, he was actually a project from my new Christmas book originally, which I showed on the last um, episode of our sort of crochet catch up podcast. Um, he's called Ronnie the Reindeer, and I included him in November's Curate Crochet Box. So this is what everybody um, got to make, and it was an exclusive. Um, I feel like I'm talking to him. It was an exclusive pattern. It was from I've lost it. My new book, as I said. So uh, yeah, the publishers let me include the pattern in the box, and um, everybody got to make on Ronnie. So. He's a little cutie. Um, he's made using cotton, Rico Rumi, I think is what I included in the book, but I mean, you know, any DK weight cotton will do you fine for this pattern. Um, this pattern at the moment is only available in the book, but I do have some Ronnie kits on my website if anybody is taken by how cute he is. Look how cute he is. Um, I can't remember if I showed him as a sample from the book when I did the book episode um, but there's also a few other little characters in the book so there's a Santa Claus, a snowman, um, a Christmas pudding, a gingerbread man and a penguin. Um, so obviously some of them are a bit more seasonal but I figure a reindeer you can make any time of the year. Counting that as my first finished object and then um, the second finished object that I mentioned is this little number. This is the Starry Nights Hot Water Bottle cover. And this was December's Curate Crochet Box project. So everybody got everything in the box they needed to make the hot water bottle, including the fluffy pom-pom and a mini hot water bottle itself. And you would not believe, so I had this idea in, I don't know, like September, October, the difficulties I had in sourcing hot water bottles. I signed up to, oh, you would not believe how many wholesalers before I managed to place a pre-order two months in advance for a bulk order of hot water bottles. And all the sellers were like, they've suddenly gone really, really popular. I mean, an energy crisis plus a cold snap. Hot water bottles were very hard to come by. So um, I was doubly pleased that I made this kit happen. The yarn that we used in this kit is the Sheepies or Hiepies, um Stone Washed XL. I don't know how well you can see. It's got a really lovely, um, it was like a very gentle mull to it, where there's a kind of white yarn um, mixed in there with the green. And then on the front, the stitch is the starburst stitch. So it's kind of made um, across two rows. And then it's like a four row pattern repeat, I think. Um, so as you work back and forth, you then, this is sort of one row here and it's a load of decreases and then this is the second row, it's a load of increases. So together, they create this really pretty starburst. And then we just did some really simple embroidery. Uh, I say embroidery, it's just straight stitches from the center out to the edges to really sort of accentuate the stitch and show it off nicely. Um, and then, it, the, it is removable, you can take it out. I just tied this quite tightly around the neck. The neck is then worked on the side um, after you've put the two pieces together. So that was my most popular box ever. I think maybe partly because it was the December box and so people were buying it as gifts and presents. But yeah, something about it just captured everybody's imagination. So I thought I would show it here as one of my finished objects. Um, because after all, it is something that I designed and made. <laughs> Why not include it? Um, so yeah, 
That's my second finished object. And then the third one, the fourth one isn't a curate crochet box project, but the third one is. The third one is the box um, that is currently on sale, although having said that, it's only on sale until tomorrow. This is called the Forget Me Not Journal, and I've really wanted to try out this stitch for ages. Um, the little flowers are made as you crochet, so they're not added afterwards there. They're made as you go in rows. Um, and you get this lovely journal, and you make the journal cover, and I'll show you what else is included in the box, as it's the current one. Um, I just thought that would be a really nice January project, something that people can use then for the, the whole of the rest of the year, and yeah, it's just a pretty one. They just wanted to do something really pretty. So here's everything that's included in the box. I haven't got it very artfully styled, so you have to agree with me, but obviously you get the A5 hardback notebook, and you also get, oh, we're quite notebook heavy themed on this episode, aren't we? This really cute little, um, it's a mini bullet journal. So this is the cover, and then inside, I don't know how well you'll be able to see, um, the pages are dotted. So I've been really enjoying, um, I started doing a bullet journal this time last year, and I really like having the dotted pages. I find them quite handy in terms of what you can, um, draw out and then add to it and everything. So that's that. You also get in the box one of these um, sprout pencils. I'm gonna put it down. Um, it's a company that makes these, please focus, sprout pencils. And after you've finished using it, there are seeds in the end. So you plant the little pencil and you can grow a plant. Why does that excite me so much? It's so cute. Um, so on this one, you can you can grow a daisy, but there are all sorts. There's going to be a whole range. So if you're already subscribed or you um, you do go for a box, you might get a daisy. You might get forget me not is one of the flowers, and then there's some um, herbs and different things as well. So I just love that company, and I really wanted to include something useful, but also obviously it's not crochet, but you can use it for your journal. The yarn, of course, um, I have used one of these balls, so yours won't come looking like this. Um, <laughs> two balls of Serda Snuggly 100% Cotton DK, which looks like this. It's just, I know I've said the word pretty about 10 times already, but it's just such a pretty colour. So that's what's going in the box. Um, a crochet hook in the what I call the signature, black and gold, um, some stitch markers, and a yarn needle. So, yeah, that's January's box. Um, that's on sale until the 6th of January, um, and I haven't quite got the next project ready to show you yet, but I'm really excited about some of the projects I've got coming up for in the box for um, 2023 as it is now. I will just go and grab the fourth and final finished object since I last spoke to you because it's quite a large one so bear with me and I'll be back in a moment. I'd like everybody to meet my new baby. <laughs> this is Humboldt Penguin, I think that's his name, um, and he is a new crochet <laughs> See little wonky. He's a new crochet creation. Let me scoot back a bit so you can see him. Um, I made this guy for George, my youngest son, for Christmas because I don't know if anybody has been watching for this long, but I previously made two giant um, amigurumi characters for <laughs> my kids for um, Christmas. I think it was Christmas 2017, so it was a while ago. Um, but I'm I'm confident I showed them on the the podcast if you've been listening for that long. Um, and I have three kids. George is my youngest. This was actually his fourth Christmas, and I just thought he needs a giant amigurumi too. So um, yeah. This was a Christmas present for George. He's got a little 
removable cape. Obviously he's quite large, so I made him from um, Jan Schenkel, Schenkel's new book, which is Animal Friends of Pika Pau 3. I do have her other two books as well. And I just love how she designs Amigurumi. All the characters and creatures are just so cute. Um, and in her book, she typically, she typically makes her amigurumis using, I think she uses an iron weight cotton and like a three or four millimeter hook. So this uh, chunky number is made using super chunky yarn. And I will tell you a couple of the brands I used in a minute because people keep asking me on, on Instagram as well. Um, and I used a eight millimeter hook. I think possibly I should have used a six millimeter hook because for instance, like on his tummy is a little bit gappy, but he's also quite heavy. Um, I happen to have a load of stuffing left over from the Ronnie the Reindeer kits, which proved very helpful in stuffing him. The yarns I used were a bit of a mix um, and all quite expensive really, but if you followed um, along when I made the previous two, I just used a really cheap and cheerful, super chunky yarn. I think it was Mariner and it came in at about £1.20 a ball, um, like 100% acrylic. And that worked really well. So if you're looking for a sort of cheaper alternative, I would recommend the Mariner yarn. Um, this guy uses a mix of yarns that I had in my stash and were left over for some commissions and previous projects. So um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them, although they're lovely colors, unless you do want to spend a little bit more. So um, this was the And Make yarn from the Fibre Company, this green here. Um, I think as was the white, which is a yarn I've used recently in a commission. Um, and then the mustard and another one of the whites perhaps was a Hobbycraft yarn, um, which again I think had a bit of a higher price point. And then the, the dark blue and the light blue was actually a Stitch and Story yarn, um, who have recently um, gone into administration, which is really sad because I followed their company for a long time and they did super cute kits and um, lovely yarns. So I think, I don't know the story, I think it was something to do with investment pulling out, but super sad. Um, so some of those yarns aren't really available. So it's not particularly helpful. So I've used a mix of three and actually the Hobbycraft one was much chunkier than the, um, the Fiberco one. So it was a little bit of a hodgepodge of just, I was just trying to use up what I had in stash really. Um, and as I said, probably, although the seven millimeter hook worked well, was it seven or eight? I said eight millimeter hook worked well for this Hobbycraft one. Um, it was definitely a bit gappy for the and, the and make, but that's I guess that's the nature as well of using a super chunky yarn because once you get past chunky or bulky, um, a lot of different yarns fall into the category of super chunky, whereas actually the hook size can range from like six millimeter to 15 millimeter. So um, possibly just choose one brand and stick with it. But I didn't alter the pattern in any way. I just used a bigger hook and a chunkier yarn and that made him bigger overall. So that is um, my fourth finished object. It's also, I mentioned I bought a new book, which was this one. And it's also my work in progress because I'll be honest, George was mildly interested <laughs> in his new teddy. He wasn't too bothered, but his six year old brother, Charlie, just loves soft toys. Like they just have a special place in his heart. So he sort of semi adopted this one and it is his birthday later this month. And he's like, please, can you make me one mummy? Obviously he does already have the giant one that I made in 2017, but um, I've started making for him the um, polar bear, partly because I had a lot of the white yarn still. Um, and that's about as far as they've got, this is his head. <laughs> so I have gone down a hook size for this one. Um, I think I'm using a 6.5 now on this one. So you can just kind of see how it's a little bit closer 
intention. So that is pretty much it where I'm up to for whips, new things, unfinished objects. I, I just thought I'd come on and do a nice chatty crochet catch up for you all um, as it has been a little while since I made a video but I don't know, again, I always say this, I'm really keen to make more videos. I have a few planned out. And as it's a new year, I thought, let's get back into it and let's um, let's try and do something a bit different. So thank you so much if you're still watching and you've got to this point. Don't forget to end the video by leaving a comment and letting me know what you've been making recently. And yeah, I can't wait to catch up with you next time and to, um, to be back in the saddle, is that the saying? And um, be creating a few more videos for you. Obviously I'm in my new house, so we're doing a bit of decorating and making, and um, I could give you a tour of the new new office. Um, all sorts of exciting things coming up. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I will speak to you all very soon.